At first, I thought it was thunder. I thought it might be a storm. But why was it so still and so completely dark? All I knew was that something was wrong. Terribly, terribly wrong. You'll find out what was wrong as you hear the autocrat on Theater 5. <laughs> Thunder. Harry, are you awake? What time is it? I can't see the clock. Harry! Oh, no, of course you're not awake. You'd sleep through anything. It is thunder. Before a storm or after? What the power must be off. That's why it's so still and pitch dark. I'm sure the power's out, Harry. Oh, Harry, wake up. I'm certainly not getting up to see what's wrong. My head is splitting. What I've just told you should be good news, Emily. Your heart is as strong as a girl of 20s. I'll be 47 my next birthday. So that's nonsense. Oh, I appreciate your trying to lie to me. Emily, I've told you the but truth. I have known I'm chronically ill for a long time, Doctor. I don't need to be spared a bitter pill I've long since swallowed. Any moment, any moment, my heart may give out just like that. I know it. My family knows it. I've accepted what must be, and my family has accepted it. Emily, listen to me. Not only as your physician, but as an old friend... Your family needn't accept your ill health. You needn't accept it. Your health is excellent. Oh. Now, Emily, wait. I'll not stay and listen to such a Now, wait, thing. please. Harry tells me his firm wants to send him abroad for a year. To Turkey, yes. Go with him. The two of you together. After all these years, get away alone together. And if something happens, be treated by a, a strange doctor nothing, over there? Nothing will happen. You'll stand the trip fine. Believe me, you'll thrive on it. Frank Towers, you're a fool. And when I keel over with a heart attack, you'll know it. But for me, that will be too late. Well, a pleasant surprise, Emily, visiting me in my office. I won't take but a moment of your time, Mr. Varden. And please... Don't mention this visit to Harry. Oh, planning a surprise for him, too, eh? <laughs> what is it, his birthday? Anniversary? Nothing so happy, I'm afraid. I... May I sit down? I I feel a little faint. Oh, do. Do. We're right here in this chair. <laughs> Thank I'll you. I'll call Harry. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm all right, really. It, it, it comes and goes. Mr. Varden. My husband tells me he may be chosen for the assignment abroad. Oh, not maybe, Emily. He will be. Has been. The firm feels Harry Alcott is the man to handle this Turkish assignment. One of our best engineers. And he rates this plum. Which is a plum, my dear. Harry thinks so. A rare opportunity. The sort of thing that can make a man's reputation assure his career. Mr. Varden, I... I've just come from my doctor's. The doctors. Yes. I've tried to shield my family from knowing, but I've known. And I think they suspect. Now I'm positive. It's my heart, Mr. Varden. Oh, I'm so sorry, Emily. Yes. Well, the last thing I want is to stand in my husband's way, but he is my husband. And I do need him now as never before. Most assuredly. And Turkey is so... so far away. And this... well, it... it could happen any time, at any moment. And you know Harry, he'd never forgive himself if he wasn't at my side. Most devoted husband I know. If you wish me to treat this in confidence... Oh, yes, please. 
Why, I depend on it. You see, I don't want to worry, Harry, before... before it actually happens. But if he could just... well... simply not get the assignment... <laughs> Cleaners, a bill from the garage, bill from the gas company, bills, bills, bills. Oh, on one of these again. Mother, is that you? Oh, yes, dear. Anything in the mail for me? Oh, Mother? no, 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 nothing. But Diane, whatever are you doing home? Is anything wrong at the office? I just left early. Can I see the mail, please? What? Can I look through the mail, please? Well, it's just the usual. I thought I glimpsed an envelope in Joe's handwriting. Oh, did you? Did you indeed? After I distinctly said there is nothing for you? It is a letter from Joe, isn't it? I'm begging you to come back to him, no doubt. Joe called me at the office this morning. He's written a dozen letters. I got none because you intercepted them all. Yes, for your own good. Mother, I'm 23 years old. I'm not a child. I'll live my own life. Not with Joe. With Joe, if we can get a chance to work things out. I'm meeting him tonight. No, Diane. If we can talk our way round to it, out of this mess, I'm going back to it. Now, fear I won't let you ruin your life. Now, you... Something wrong, kitten? Not really, Daddy. You keep out of this, Harry. Well, she's my daughter, too, Emily. And I'm Joe's wife. Maybe not in name only anymore. Well, well, well. Our kitten's actually showing her claws for a change. Harry, I'm in no mood for what passes for your humor. Now, Diane's just upset. She'll come to her senses. What are you doing here, anyway? I do live here. Everybody's home early today, Diane. Now, you? I came home early to talk to you, Emily. Oh? I hear you paid a visit to the boss this morning. Mr. Varden told you? Not precisely. But he did let slip a mention of Doc Towers, so when I left Mr. Barton, I phoned the doctor. You had no right to do that. Why? Doc Towers told me the good news. What good news? About your test, Sam, about your state of health. My news is all bad, so it's a happy coincidence that yours is all good. But after I spoke with the doctor, I got to wondering. Uh, I'll get it. I'm right here. Hello. I'll accept it, yes. Well, this is his father. Jimmy. Oh, I, I see. Yes, she's right here. A collect call from Jimmy at school, person to person to his mother. Give me the phone. Hello? Yes, this is she. Well, yes, yes, of course. Put him on. Jimmy, oh, darling, are you all right? Well, I'm relieved. When your father said you needed me, I... What? What? Oh, darling, not again. If it's another expulsion, that's it. No other school will have it. What, dear? I can't hear you. Oh, darling, I know it isn't your fault. No one's blaming you. Those stupid teachers simply don't understand a sensitive child. Jimmy? Oh, darling, please don't cry. Mm, yes, I know it's hard, but you... Of course, Mother understands. You're ruining the boy, Emily. Oh, hush. Yes, dear, I'll wire money for your fair home. Now, Jimmy, stop worrying. Doesn't Mother always understand? Have I ever let you down? Yes. Yes, dear, I'll see you soon. Oh, the poor darling. All his life wrong. What? You've let him down, and Diane, and me. Well, Harry. You run our lives. And I can't let you do it anymore, Em. That's what I came home to say. I can't let you do it anymore. <laughs> Dreadful day. No wonder my head's pounding. And on top of it, all the storm that's put out all the lights. Harry! Oh, how 
can that man sleep through this? Not only the storm, but poor Jimmy in trouble and I and... I certainly haven't... All our lives, Anne. And you're ruining him. If that's the thanks I get. Our son's a mamby-pamby mama's boy. He's 17, and your apron strings are throttling. Harry, I'll not listen to any more such talk. Our daughter's marriage is on the rocks because you encouraged her to walk out on Joe over a minor tip, a spat, a few words of disagreement between... Because I see Joe for what he is. He's a nothing, a nobody. And me. Maybe most of all me. Harry Orcutt. I think I saw you today as you really are, Emily, for the first time. I've shut my eyes to it. I haven't wanted to see that. But today, you left me no choice. If you're saying I ruined your life, well, you can thank me for everything you have. Everything you are. Our children, a home, even the little money we have saved. Without me, you'd have none of it. Why did you go to see Mr. Barton? Now, don't change the subject. I'm sticking right to the subject, Em. Why did you see the boss this morning? For your sake. As I do everything in life for the sake of some member of this family. I'm not getting the assignment to go abroad. Aren't you? It was mine. I'd earned it. It was my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I had it right here in the palm of my hand, and it's gone. Gone! What did you say to Bob? Don't Emily? you dare raise your voice to me. What did you say to him? Not to let you go abroad. Yes, I said that. I asked him not to give you the assignment. Why? In heaven's name, why? Selfishly. I use the word then, I use it again. I am selfish. If need is selfish, and belonging, and love. Love? Yes, love. Oh, I know. People make jokes today about the woman who says, I've given you the best years of my life. But it's true. I have given them to you. And I've earned what I'm asking for. What are you asking for? A husband who's some use to me when he's needed. When I'm failing in hell. When I look in the mirror and, and see how I'm failing. And get frightened at what I see. I'm frightened at what I see. Harry. You're not failing in health. There's nothing wrong with your heart. Towers said every test was negative. Frank Towers is a fool. I told him that to his face. Hem. Hem, listen to me. I wouldn't have left you alone to go abroad. I wanted you to... To come with me, to take you with me. I I, I planned on And these are children. They're not children, Anne. And my home? To go to a strange, faraway place like Turkey? Em, it was my great opportunity. And you would have muffed it. What? You would have failed, Harry. If I must spell it out for you, that's the real reason I asked that you be denied the assignment. Because you'd have failed to measure up. You really believe you that? You wouldn't have had the sense, the sensitivity to see you were failing. But I would. And I couldn't go through that again. I couldn't be hurt for you that way again. To endure everyone knowing I'd married a dismal failure. Diane, where are you going? Out, Mother. I'm meeting Joe in 15 minutes. No, I won't let you. You can't stop me. Try to understand. Never mind her understanding. Go. I don't really remember anymore why I left Joe. I really don't, Mother. And if it's no more important than that, then it's not as important as our marriage. Diane. Diane, I need you. You'll have me, dear. Her apartment's only a dozen blocks away. No, no, you don't understand. I, I'm not well. The doctor said... Tell her what the doctor said, Em. He said that any moment I... Oh, 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 the pain. Oh, it's here. It's Mother. Oh. Go, kitten. I'll take care of her. Go. Daddy, oh. do something. She's not ill, Diane. Believe me. I will not say that. Oh. Look at her. Mother, Mother, here. Let me help you to this chair. If you don't go now, you never will. Then I never will. Uh, Get her a glass of water, can't you? Well, how can you see her suffering and be so heartless? Oh. Diane's here. Diane will take care of you, dear. Diane will take care of you. Harry? Yes, Em. Oh, you startled me coming up so quietly. You were resting. I, I didn't want to disturb you. What time is it? After ten. Here, I'll turn on this lamp. Where's Diane? In her room. 
Oh, she didn't... She didn't keep her date with Joe, no, Em. Here, I uh, thought this might help you sleep through the night. A sedative? Very mild. Oh, I don't want it. Here, fluff up my pillow. Are you sure you feel well enough to sit up? I want to sit up. Or was that intended to be sarcastic? I'm not being sarcastic. That's much too shallow a word to describe how I feel tonight. How I feel tonight is exhausted. It's been a dreadful day. Hasn't it? Em, I want to apologize. Yes? For those things I said earlier. I should think you would apologize. Your reasons for talking to Mr. Barton. Well, I've been trying to see it from your point of view. I guess a woman, a wife doesn't have a man's angle on his career, his work, his dreams. But there's something more important. M, about Diane and Joe. Diane is through with that man. Give them a chance, Em. Let them live their lives. Now, if you came up here to talk nonsense... It's not nonsense, Em. It's our daughter's whole future I'm thinking it's about. It's her future I'm thinking about. It belongs to her, Emily. Not to us, not to you. Oh, Harry, do me one favor. If I can. Just confine being a failure to your career. Keep it out of this house. Don't be a failure as a father any more than you already are. Am I that in your eyes, Emily? Well, there's a mirror on that wall. Look at yourself in it. Has that man shown endless patience with his son? Oh, no. Has he helped his daughter see her husband for the worthless thing he is? No. Has he once agreed with me, their mother, about how to raise them? No. You have been wrong, Em. When? Name one. You can't name one. Oh, all right, all right. It's a, it's a futile argument. Well, at least you've the sense to see that. But listen to me. Now, listen. We'll forget about your coming to the office and costing me that foreign assignment. We'll pretend it didn't happen, provided you loosen the apron strings on Jimmy and let Diane go her own way. <laughs> provided, eh? Well, Harry, that sounds like you're trying to strike a bar. I'm not bargaining. I'm asking. Well, don't. Oh, now you've managed to upset me again. Where is that sedative? I need it now. Him for the last time. Here it is. Wait. Harry, shall I tell you something? You bore me. Oh, oh, oh that terrible stuff. I'm sorry, Emma. Uh, Why do you take it all the time? Well, don't you understand? I've got to get some rest. Yes, Emily. Rest. <laughs> So suddenly, Doctor. I got to you as fast as I could locate you. It's this way sometimes. Every test proves out. Then nature steps in and says, You're wrong, Doctors. Mother. Oh, Mother. What is. What's happened? Why is Diane crying? Harry, what about your son? I wired him to hurry. What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> Clearly. But that was hours ago. What days? No. No, this all happened today. This perfectly dreadful day. Ending with this storm that put out all the electric power. Harry? That sound. My own heart beating. Harry! He is not here. No one's here. But then, where am I? My own bed? No. It's not my pillow. It doesn't feel like... I don't have a satin pillowcase. Satin? My arms. I can barely move them. A few inches. 
The Autocrat, written by William Kendall Clark and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Mary Jane Hickby, Court Benson, Connie Brigham, Nat Poland, and Humphrey Davies. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastovsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Boy speaking.